Hey guys, good morning. Today we're going to start a new project here uh, in the Vengeance Speed Garage. We're going to be working on my son's uh, 1971 Ford F-250. It has a 360 uh, V8 and a C6 automatic transmission in it. Um, it's a cool old truck. I'm going to show you guys what the truck looks like here. We've already done a little bit of cleanup on the exterior to get it looking a little bit better and remove some of the some of the old man uh, upgrades that had been done to it and uh, get it cleaned up, looking proper. Um, we did some welding on the front bumper, straightened it out. Uh, it was kind of pushed in. We had to pull that out and uh, make it look halfway straight. And uh, I think we've got, uh, I think we got the old girl looking looking a lot better here. But what this video series here is going to be about is about putting an old vehicle back on the road. Um, when we picked this truck up, we had to drive it a little over 100 miles to get it home. So it's still in drivable condition, but it has a lot of a lot of unknowns and a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. It's been neglected for a period of time. Uh, first thing we're going to start off with is an oil change because the, the oil filter on there has rust on it. It's been so long since it had an oil change. So we're going to be doing a lot of basic maintenance type work on this truck. And uh, we're also going to be doing some modifications to the truck. I'm not sure how deep we're going to get yet. Um, I have some ideas that I'd like to do, but it's not my truck. So I'm going to discuss it with my son here, and we're going to we're going to try to come up with a game plan, and we're going to knock these things out as we get to them. Uh, I've already ordered a ton of parts for the truck. We've got a bunch of great stuff coming. Uh, but today we're going to start doing some of the engine maintenance work. First thing we're going to do is an oil change. We're going to do plugs. We're going to do new wires. Uh, but already has the new cap and rotor on it, but uh, uh, we're going to go through the carburetor, make sure the carb's tuned correctly and clean it up. Um, we're also going to do a new water pump, hoses, and a thermostat. Uh, we're going to change out the air filter, too, to a new cartridge uh, filter inside. And just, just give it a good once-over and make the old girl run a little bit smoother, a little bit better. Uh, it runs pretty decent, but it does have a little bit of a stumble at low RPMs, and I'm guessing that that's probably uh, ignition-related. And we're going to bust out the pressure washer before we get started turning wrenches so we can get all of the old oil and gunk and dirt that's just accumulated over the whole truck off of it and get it cleaned up, knock off some of the rust scale, and uh, just make it a little bit more pleasant to turn wrenches on. So I'm going to give you guys a quick walk around here and uh, show you what the truck looks like, and um, then we're going to get to work. Okay guys, so this is our 1971 F-250 here. My son... Uh, just picked this up as his first car. Uh, he loves classics, loves old Fords, and um, this was kind of a natural for him. Uh, truck's in pretty decent shape for 50 years old, but uh, it does have some rust that we're going to have to deal with down the road and uh, do some welding on it and patch up uh, some previous body work that wasn't done correctly. But I'm just going to give you a quick walk around of how it looks presently, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how this project goes. So we've already done some cleanup work on the old camper special here. We put some Ford OBS mirrors on it, which are temporary. We'll probably be swapping those out for something that look a little bit better, but uh, it didn't have any mirrors on it when we bought it. So that was, uh, that was a, an upgrade we had to do. Uh, the bumper here had seen better days, so I've uh, done a little straightening and, and had to cut and slit both the top and bottom sections of the bumper so I could get a little metal out of it to bend it back into position. Uh, it was really badly stretched there where it had taken a hard impact at the license plate and pushed all of that back in. Um, but we've got it banged out pretty decent and it's looking, uh, uh, looking alright. You can see here we've got some mystery bubbling underneath the uh, baby blue paint. Uh, I'm hoping that a lot of this is just bad body work and it's just Bondo and some uh, metal that needs maybe some holes filled um, to fix that up. Up here in the drip rails though we've got some pretty serious rot and this is going to have to be cut out and a new section welded in. And along the back as well we've got uh, some thin material to deal with. Inside the truck's in pretty decent condition for a 50 year old truck. Uh, the dash has been reworked by the previous owner and looks good and works good. Um, it's missing the dash pad and the vents. We're probably not going to put the dash pad back on it, but I would like to get the uh, the metal vents and paint them to match the dash. 
uh, so that we have a nice metal metal dash here. Uh, we've also got a rehang sun visors that are missing. Swap out the uh, aftermarket mirror for the correct mirror. Um, just a lot of little things. The columns uh, had some hot router modifications done to it and um, while it's probably okay for now, uh, we will be swapping this out at some point and getting an original indicator pointer uh, replaced back here in the column and replacing this taped up steering wheel with a with a nice original steering wheel with a horn button on it. This one's missing the horn button. But overall, she's a good old truck, California truck. Um, we picked it up near the coast, which is evidence of why the uh, the rust is so bad on it. The bed's in pretty decent shape. It, it does have a few dents here in the middle that we're going to bang back out and it has one of the bed mounts uh, has been modified. So we've got to remove that bolt and see um, what's underneath. My guess is that that bolt pulled through but may not be the case. The rest of the bed looks very solid so I'm not sure why they uh, modified that bed mount up front. Alongside the rails here we've got some Bondo, especially up here in the front. It's pretty thick. Um, not sure why that's Bondoed. So we've got to knock that off uh, eventually here and see what kind of repairs we need to make. We've got a lot of holes to fill, not only on the bed but as, uh, on the transmission tunnel as well. And we're missing our badges here on the back. I've got to order these up, uh, some camper special badges that should be on there. Okay guys, well we're back from our parts run here with the old 71 F250. We're calling her Old Blue, I think. Uh, that's what my son seems to like, and I kind of like it too. So uh, we got Old Blue back. She's running good, but she could run a little bit better, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Some of the items we picked up here are just uh, cleaning products, uh, flushing out the cooling system, which probably hasn't been flushed in a while. We know we have a a water pump leak so we know we have to address that we've got a new water pump on the way upper and lower hoses we've got our new thermostat uh, to go on the belts are good so we're gonna we're gonna leave the belts for now of course we got to remove them to uh, get to our water mm -hmm. pump um, we've got some new plugs we're gonna throw in it and some new wires that are on the way and that should make things idle a little bit better and pull a little bit harder down low. Hose down the engine with some foamy engine bright here. Let it sit while the engine's warm so it can kind of cook off and bake off some of that stuck on grease and oil. And then we're going to hit it with a pressure washer. We'll go over the whole truck, try and get all the cobwebs knocked off of it and some of the loose scale and all of the engine oil and grease that's accumulated on the block and intake manifold and valve covers over the years. And then while that dries and the engine's cool from being soaked in water, we're going to pull the plugs, replace the plugs, uh, wires, do the oil change, and wait for our water pump to arrive. Uh, one of the other things we're going to do on this old truck, and you might want to do on an old project you pick up, is we're going to dump a quart of ATF, uh, or as much as we can get anyway, into the crankcase. And that way, uh, with the system flush in the radiator, and the ATF flushing out the oil in the crankcase will start it up, uh, let it dry out after we pressure wash it, and just let that run for a few minutes, let the block heat back up again a little bit, um, and then we'll shut it off, dump the oil, and hopefully that'll help flush out some of the gunk and um, carbon that's accumulated in those oil passages and uh, kind of clean things up on the inside while we're cleaning things up on the outside. It's definitely not recommended to run your car for long periods of time with ATF in the crankcase. ATF is a very thin oil and not really meant to, uh, to protect those crankshaft journals and crank bearings um, like regular thick motor oil would be. So we're not going to let it get too hot. We're just going to let it warm up to temperature a little bit here and, and circulate some of that ATF through those passageways and try and loosen up some of the, some of the gunk in there. And after things have warmed up, then we're going to pull the lower radiator hose and let the uh, radiator and block drain. 
Uh, we're going to pull the upper hose as well, and thermostat housing and the thermostat out. Um, and then we'll flush out all of our degreaser and engine coolant flush from the engine block. And when we get nice, clean, cool, crisp, clear water coming out of our engine block, we can uh, then install our new water pump and our hoses back on. Top it off with some fresh coolant and some distilled water, and we'll be good to go, I think, on the cooling system. Try to make some headway here on the Old Blue F-250 project. Okay guys, so we're back on Old Blue today, which is the 71 F250 that uh, my son just bought. That we are cleaning up and getting it ready uh, for daily driver use. The, the truck's been sitting for a long period of time. And while it's in good condition, it has a lot of replaced parts already. There are some areas that we wanted to address to make sure it's reliable. Uh, and make sure that he doesn't have too many mechanical problems uh, in, in these next few months when he starts driving it every day. Uh, our, the source of our leak was actually this cooling nipple here that uh, is pressed into the front of the intake manifold and allows the bypass port to connect to the intake and circulate fluid past the, uh, past the thermostat. You can see here it's completely rotted away. When I pulled the water pump out of the uh, front of the block, um, it just slid right out of the intake manifold and there's really nothing left of it. As we were going through replacing plugs and wires, um, I thought I would check top dead center and make sure that our rotor was pointed at number one on the, on the body of the distributor uh, because you don't really know unless you check it um, and in this case it paid off because it wasn't uh, pointing to number one on the dis distributor cap so to avoid confusion down the road and make things easier when Parker's working on his truck and changing wires and stuff in the future I wanted to make sure that our number one uh, cylinder was at top dead center was pointing at our number one all caps are designated with a with a one and that should be where your number one top dead center is located in our case it was the second port over and they had done that because uh, the wires on the Pertronix ignition module were too short to allow the distributor to rotate uh, into the position it needed to be in and still reach the coil so I'm going to extend those wires and solve that problem and then we will reclock the distributor so that the rotor uh, at number one top dead center where the motor is located now uh, points to the correct number one port on the distributor cap. So that's something you might want to check if you're putting one of these old cars back on the road or you have one uh, that you've been driving that needs some tune-up work. Make sure that number one is actually number one. Otherwise, if you replace those wires and put them on, you're going to have a misfire. It's not going to run. And the only way to know for sure is to rotate the pulley around number one top dead center and double check it. Once those things are handled, we're also going to replace all of the fuel lines uh, with some new fresh rubber line um, in the engine compartment as well as up underneath uh, at the fuel tank and the fuel selector valve. A good indication that we needed to address the fuel system was probably the fact that they had mounted a full-size fire extinguisher <laughs> inside the truck on the passenger side. So rather than, than just driving around waiting for a fire to happen, we're actually going to uh, take care of those fuel lines and make sure that we don't have any fuel leaks uh, and not take our chances and need that fire extinguisher. Well, we got the old Ford running pretty good. Me and Parker here, we did a whole tune-up. Uh, new plugs, new wires, already had the electronic ignition in it. Cap and rotor's good. So we uh, adjusted the timing, we got it set at about 12 degrees, initial advance right now, about 34 total. The truck seems to like it really good. We're still adjusting the carb a little bit. Um, previously the carb was unbalanced, you know, one throat mixture was uh, 
was off, so it wasn't balanced and run, ran like crap. So throttle response is real poor. And now we've got got both throats balanced out. Throttle response feels pretty good. And uh, we might even get the old girl to do a little bit of a burnout. Okay guys, well that's pretty much going to wrap it up here on the F-250 for today, um, actually for this week. We've uh, we spent a few days getting the old girl running, getting it back into decent condition, getting everything adjusted right, doing a lot of little replacements and little things to get it back on the road, but make it uh, make it a little more reliable uh, so we're not having a, having a lot of breakdowns and poor performance, poor fuel mileage. So things are, things are really good at this point here after a few days of turning wrenches. We knew the truck was in pretty good condition. The motor was in decent shape because we drove it a little over 100 miles just to get it home. So uh, we had a good idea that that things were things were not in terrible condition, but uh, performance was sluggish, and uh, I knew timing was off and and the carburetor was off uh, during our drive, and we used a lot of fuel getting here. So uh, so I knew there was a lot of room for improvement. Um, things that we went through and replaced uh, was the water pump. Uh, we replaced water pump and hoses, uh, thermostat, plugs and wires. We uh, set the timing on the distributor and got uh, got the engine timed in the ballpark. I think we're pretty close to where we want to be. Um, also adjusted the carburetor. Both throats on the carb were out of sync. So now uh, now all that's adjusted. We, we set them both at two turns out. I think it could use a little bit more fuel off the bottom end. Uh, but it's running pretty solid as is. I uh, replaced all the fuel lines from our new fuel pump uh, up to the carburetor and all the fuel lines on our fuel selector valve um, underneath. I've still got to drop the tanks, clean the tanks out, and replace the fuel lines from the from the fuel tanks to the uh, to the selector valve. So I've still got a couple couple old fuel lines there that need to be replaced. Um, we replaced uh, the filter at the carburetor. I've got a new filter for the fuel pump. So I need to take that uh, cartridge off the bottom of the mechanical fuel pump and replace the uh, cartridge filter. And that was one of the parts that we ended up getting lucky on that were already replaced. We've, we've got a brand new fuel pump. We've got a brand new starter. Uh, the belts are brand new. The electronic ignition, Pertronics, is brand new. Uh, we've also got a new air filter in the, in the air filter housing. So it's nice to have those new parts. That's probably 300 bucks worth of parts that... Uh, that the previous owners have uh, supplied for us so that's that's always good on the exterior I straightened out the old crinkled up bumper and got it uh, mostly straight had to uh, cut some slits in it and take a little material out because it was stretched so badly from the impact there on the on the front driver's side that I needed to uh, needed to slit it so I could bend it back into position and re-weld it and get that uh, get that looking straight looks a lot better than it did also adjusted the hood. The hood was kind of popped up on the driver's side. Pulled that back down where it needed to be, um, and it's looking uh, looking pretty good. We also took all the old man accessories off of the truck that had been added over time and over years, so she's looking a lot uh, a lot better and driving a lot better. Everything uh, everything's working pretty good. We tightened up the steering box and took a lot of that play out of the old mechanical uh, manual steering box. But we still have a long way to go. We've got to get that fuel gauge working. Uh, number one, that that's the next thing I've got to tackle is the wiring under the dash. Get the fuel gauge working. Get the heater blower working. Uh, I've got a new heater core on the way that we're going to swap out and replace. And we still need a lot of little little things. Uh, I'd like to find some West Coast Junior mirrors uh, for the truck or, or full West Coast mirrors if I can find those. Um, they're pretty expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks just for a mirror set on eBay. So I'm hoping to find a set at the yard um, that we can at least source some parts from or maybe on Craigslist find a, a guy selling some old mirrors off one of these trucks. Uh, we've already got all the bolt holes for them, but, uh, but none of the mirror components. But all in all, the old girl's running good, looking good, and uh, I think for now we can put it, uh, put it aside. My son can start driving it and enjoying it, um, and I can get back to my other projects here, which are plentiful. <laughs> So for today's video guys, that's going to wrap it up. 
Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new, please click subscribe. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up. I've got tons of work to do here on our Mustang project, and that's all going to get underway here uh, this week. Uh, I've got some stuff to do on the Ford OBS. I'm going to be working on those doors a little bit today uh, because the rivets in my driver's side door finally let go on my window regulator, and uh, right now my window's all the way down, and it's raining. So I'm going to get the old F-250 out of the driveway here, pull up the OBS 350, and uh, do a little work on my doors so I can get my window rolled up. If you like the video, guys, and you like the F-250 here, please give us a like. Thanks for watching.